Welcome to the TPC Desktop video series. In this video, we'll be looking at Google Earth KML files. So I'll use the term Google Earth or KML kind of interchangeably here. I've opened a sample survey called Learn KML that ships with Traverse PC. It's a subdivision, 15 lot subdivision. And I want to open up the surfaces and make sure we turn on a surface here. And I've got a number of things turned on as far as lots. And let's just see what happens when we export this to a KML file. We do that in the File Manager. Choose File, Export. And we'll choose Google KML from the list. Quite a number of file formats are supported here. Choose the export options that we want. I'm just going to choose Export Line, Color, and Width. Leave everything else uh, the way the default values are. And uh, finally then, I'm just going to tell it that I want to send out this one drawing. So I've got the entire drawing, plat page one. Let's go ahead and export that. And we see the Traverse PC tells us it's opening the KML file. It's now writing the surface, the 27 traverses, and the one layer that has uh, our own lines and uh, arcs and stuff like that on it, and closes the file. So at this point, Traverse PC has written that file for us. And let's go ahead and hit the Preview button. The Preview button is going to open Google Earth for us and uh, bring in that KML file for us. And let's just kind of look around here a minute and see what we actually got. Uh, I'm going to just turn on the points here for a moment. And we can see there's quite a bit of data right here in uh, this subdivision. And we're just going to come in and turn it off um, one at a time here, so you can kind of see what we got. So I've expanded the learn KML KML file, and I see I've got four folders, and I always get these four folders. I always get a drawing folder. If I exported a drawing, I'm going to have any of the user layer items here. So I could expand that and see that I had some lines and such on the zero layer, so there they are. I get a traverses folder shows me all the traverses that were exported. I have a surface folder that shows me the surfaces that are exported. And Traverse PC is using the same name for the surface here that it used in, in Traverse PC. So it's, it's send that same name out to Google Earth. And it's just a great way to correlate that data back and forth. Here are my points that are involved in there. And you can see that as I expand these folders, I have some information like the point description here with the point. I don't know if the surface, okay, I've got a point or a description for the surface here as well. So just some basic information there for me. Now, I'm probably not going to want to see absolutely all this data at once because it gets kind of cluttered. So I'm going to uncheck the points here. It cleans up all of that for me. I'm going to uncheck the surface. So the surface goes away. And now I've just got the traverses and the drawings out here. So let's go ahead and Zoom in on this a little bit more here. And uh, let's go ahead and turn on a couple of these traverse points here and just see. So I'm sitting here at about lot, I think this is about like lot 14 or 15 here. So let's tell Traverse PC that we want to show the points for lot 14 and we want to see the points for lot 15. See how nice it is to be able to include just those um, points for those particular traverses. And now I can put the cursor over this point for 10,055 and click on it. And Traverse PC is going to give me information about that point. So here I have the coordinates, the latitude, longitude, elevation, the line length coming into it. I have any radius information involved with that property line there and then a survey point type. Let's drop down to one of these points down here that probably has some curve data with it. OK, so here I've got point 742. And the line coming into 742 is part of that cul-de-sac. So I've got a radius here, a counterclockwise radius coming into 742 of 40 feet. So kind of kind of neat just to, to see what's going on here. Here I see the line is a curve point I'm on is a PT or a point of tangency. Kind of nice to have this extra information with us over here in Google Earth. Let's go ahead and uh, turn those points back off. 
and I just want to cover a few little things with you here. Watch what happens when I put the cursor over a line for the next lot over. I'm just going to put the hand over this lot line and click. And do you see how Google Earth highlights lot 12? So I know I'm in lot 12 here. If I come all the way over to this line here and put the hand over it and click, that's lot 9. So I can easily identify the lots that are in here. Uh, I'm going to turn off a couple of other traverses that I don't need. I don't need the border traverse that it was used for the topo there. I can look at any additional traverses here that I want or don't want and just click them on or off, much like doing the tags inside of Traverse BC. And then finally, I just want to show you real quickly that uh, we've got some items on the zero layer that were drawn in manually. Uh, notice here over the road, I've got some cross sections that are picking up the ditch here and over to the center line of the road probably some information that we need to pick up for the engineering involved in the project. And so I'm just going to click off that zero layer and we see all those disappear. Click it back on. There they are again. So I'm not going to cover um, everything here in detail, but I want you to know that every time I export a KML, I have these four folders to work with and that Traverse PC uses the same Traverse service and point names um, that it used to uh, identify those features inside of Google Earth. I'll go ahead and stop here and uh, leave this as sort of an introduction to the information that comes over uh, into Google Earth when we export a KML file. And we'll cover some of the details about these points, surfaces, traverses, and uh, drawing items uh, in some additional videos.